Hi guys, welcome to today's video. First off, thank you to Saria and Jossum for putting this together. I forgot to show you when I cut this, so I'm just going to show you what I did. I uploaded my image and then I'm using the new offset, which I love so much. This is a great way to make any sticker. I outlined it to where I wanted, changed it to white just because I wanted my background to be white. Then I went ahead and selected the whole um, picture, so the background and the picture, and flattened it. Um, after that, I sized it to where I wanted, and then I did just delete it because, like I said, I already had this on there. I just forgot to show you guys me putting it all together. And now I'm going to cut. And when you're going to cut your picture, you're going to print and then cut, and you're going to use the proper setting. I do use cardstock normally not cardstock on like sticky note um for that and then the correct vinyl cut for your um vinyl piece And next you're going to see I do put my resin together, rule of thumb, not rule of thumb, the only rule with resin is you're supposed to use half and half. I do heat my resin up afterwards just to help with consistency and then you stir and you stir and you stir some more. So here I am stirring my little heart out. So I used a lot of resin for this because I actually poured enough to have two projects. So you'll see here I after I mixed up my main part I did go ahead and pour part of it in for just this set of ears and then I did mix it some more just to make sure everything is consistent and heated it up a little bit more and then I added some mica powder to it and my idea for these ears was the crystal and the rock so that is what I'm going for on here and um, yeah, so for this I used a, a dark black mica powder. It's Oh, it's gray. I lied. It was a gray mica powder. It just looks black. <laughs> and I just poured the amount in that I felt like was going to be enough, obviously, to eat your own on this side of it. And um, I love this stuff. I have it in different variations, but it's really fun to play with. It makes your projects all shiny. And who doesn't like something shiny? Just like that it does change the color for you obviously the more you add the thicker consistency of your color it's going to be um, that's why like I said it's to each your own on there after I mixed it up and did all of that stuff I did go ahead and pour it into my molds I do use coaster molds myself I just find them to work the best you can get your molds I just am not a fan of them myself so I don't use the ear molds And I also don't like to fill these all the way up to the top of it either because I do not want them to be super thick and heavy. So I just um, pour about halfway-ish through the mold. You can see there's really not a lot going in there. It might look like more than what it is, but it really, I promise you, it's not all the way up to the top. And then after I pour it in, I go ahead and take my heat gun again. I am working on this part and I have now learned that um, you want to be actually a little bit further away from your resin because that is going to get your air bubbles out better than if you're as close as I am here. So um, if you do decide to do this, make sure your, your air gun is, your heat gun is a little bit further away. After I went ahead and did that, I grabbed some more mica powder in the blue and this is where I'm getting those crystal lights like the heads that are breaking open and I went ahead and um, put some lines in. I did pour a little bit of powder in a separate area because I did not want to be sticking a brush that I'm going to be putting into resin into a bag with all my other resin. So just for safety I just poured aside some to keep all my other mica powder safe. And as you can see here I am just kind of mapping out what I want. There's no really 
no very really particular order I'm doing. I'm just trying to make it look like the crystals are po poking through some cracks like they do with the stone heads. Well, they're not stone heads, but you guys know what I mean. And you guys can also see here, I do not waste any of my resin. I did pour the rest of my uh, gray black resin into the Mickey keychains because I do not want to waste. And I did pour the rest of my mica powder on it as well. Um, after I went ahead and got all of this in, I did let it sit a little bit. Your resin's going to move a lot with your mica powder. So I let it sit just a little bit, not too long. And then I go ahead and morph around the the powder that I added to it, whether that be a swirl I add or whatever, I'd go ahead and I move it around while um, the resin is still wet, but it's a little bit um, thicker in consistency um, getting ready to dry. It just kind of helps form the look that you want. And then after this, I let it sit for a day or two, depending on how fast it takes to dry, and I pop them out. This is one of my favorite parts, is just popping them out. And as you can see, it's never gonna be the same on the bottom as it is on the top part where you add it. Um, and if I didn't have didn't move that resin around, it would have all centered into the center and it wouldn't have looked like this. So that's why I go ahead and move it around. And then I decided to put my sticker and my uh, vinyl onto the ears before I sanded them. Um, I did have to redo my sticker because I had to wipe off the um, sand residue off the ears and it did completely vanish the sticker. So I would definitely recommend and I have moved, been moving forward sanding my ears and then putting my vinyl or stickers or water slide, water slide, water, whatever, that paper stuff on it afterwards. Um, but I'm just showing you me placing the stuff on there now. Um, yeah, so I did use a clear back sticker so that way it just looked like she was kind of floating in between all of the, all of it, kind of like that scene when she is walking into the water and, and floating up. That's exactly what that scene is. But yeah, that's what that is. And then I just used the um, Atlantis symbol for the other ear. After that, I went ahead and I sanded. Be very careful if you are going to do it this method and you're not going to buy the ear templates. Um, you do not want to cut your fingers. You want to make sure you're being safe. I did do this inside um, and afterwards, like it doesn't, this a sander isn't huge but it still does spread dust and everything so um, for all my other ears I have made I have uh, actually done them out on my patio with a, a garden box and putting it in there so the dust isn't going everywhere um, but also that way it is not affecting my house <laughs> so here I am just sanding and then I did use a headband for kind of comparison to see okay where is there sitting at what do I need to sand still and to get the perfect shape so that way when I go to glue my ears down they are not um, eroding off of it and it makes them more secured if you guys watched you the year to the ear the first pair of ears I made were for Brittany and I did not do this spot and I am still terrified that they would fall off I um, do recommend not just leaving them completely round because you do not get a sturdy hold onto your ears. You can make it sturdy with glue and wire and all of that, but um, if you want it to be sturdy, definitely give it a sand. I also then chose my fabric and I wanted a crystal, so I did a blue with this see-through um, and I just made it into the bow, wrapped it around, and I forgot to video gluing everything on, but here's the finished product. I love the way the bow turned out. I love the way these ears turned out, um, and I do sometimes add that edging, so I added an edging, and I also do sand around where the lip is. Um, there is that picture close up, and of course, we can't do anything without glitter and a little bit of glow in the dark. Have a great day guys. Thanks.